Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast of the friends and faculty of Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois, and the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas. My name is David Capes, and I am the Senior Research Fellow at the Lanier Theological Library and a former dean up there in Wheaton at the School of Biblical and Theological Studies. Our purpose in these podcasts is really very simple. We want to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, so we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, and not just read it, but to live it. Joining me today on Exegetically Speaking is Dr. Emily McGowan. She is Assistant Professor of Theology at Wheaton College. Dr. McGowan, good to see you. Emily. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Now, your first time on. So for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so like you said, I teach theology at Wheaton College. My area that I tend to teach in is systematic and historical theology, and I do some occasional electives in like God and the problem of evil and uh, gender and theology. So have you solved both of those questions? Uh, Definitely not. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Definitely not, but we have fun exploring them together. Yeah. My research is in the integration of ethnography and theology, so I'm looking at the study of how people live out their faith and how that informs uh, theological studies. Right now I'm writing a book on uh, theology of family. Very Hopefully cool. it'll be out in a couple of years. Good. Who's going to publish that? That's with InterVarsity Press. Oh, good. Okay. Well, when that's yeah. out, let me know. And we'd love to do, we do a podcast here at the Lanier Library called The Stone Chapel. And it's a bit longer and a little more in depth. And we go into a lot of, a lot of books like that. So I would love to do that. We'd love to do that. We got a great listenership across a few continents here. So that's good. Great. So as you have studied and become a theologian, how have biblical languages figured into your training? Yes. Well, they were, they were in my training from the beginning. So I actually did a bachelor's uh, of arts in biblical studies at Criswell college. And I was required to take two semesters of both Greek and Hebrew at mm-hmm. that level. And then in my MDiv at Truett Seminary at Baylor, I did more biblical languages and as well as, uh, you know, in, intensive like readings courses yeah. in the original languages. Really, really fun. Once I got to the PhD level in theology, biblical languages are not emphasized. Um, I had to take Latin and research German, but biblical languages weren't an emphasis for me because of the area of research that I was doing. But it's certainly been a part of my formation as a as a scholar, mm. an important part of my formation as a scholar. So when you say historical historical theology, is there a particular period that you work in primarily? Well, my my strength is probably contemporary theology, actually. But because I have to teach 2,000 years, I'm becoming much more deeply acquainted in most of the periods, at least at a at a survey level, which mm-hmm. is which is good. And the key, you know, key figures texts in those periods. So the people that you're reading, I mean, they've been formed too in a lot of ways by having Absolutely. studied the languages and kind of delving deep in that. Absolutely. Do they, do, I mean, as you're working on this book on the family, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you're not just, you're doing theology, but you're also informed by scripture. Do, do you do you ever go yeah. find yourself going back to these languages and kind of delving deeply in those? Well, part of, I think, being a good theologian is recognizing your strengths and your weaknesses. And for me, because I have not kept up proficiency in the biblical languages, it really wouldn't make sense for me to be dealing directly with the text in that way, doing my own like translation and that sort of thing. But that's where it's really important that I have good scholarly resources, trustworthy resources that have done that work for me, Mm. and that I can then access you know, the, the work that others have done, which is why even though I'm not necessarily directly translating texts, doing syntax and grammar and all that kind of stuff, right, that right. I have scholars that I, that I trust that I can turn to who have done that work and that I can draw on that because scripture is absolutely essential to what I'm doing. My theology is, is grounded in that. So. Yeah. So the resources that you're looking at and you're trusting, are any of those electronic resources or are those primarily uh, written published books. So I have to admit, I may be a teensy bit of a Luddite when it comes to these types of resources. I want to be more proficient. How about I say it that way? (laughs) I would love (laughs) to be more proficient in electronic resources, but most of mine are, are actually just like big old books that I have stacked you know, on my desk and on the the shelves behind me uh, that I use. Yeah. Yeah. You're too young to be a Luddite. You can't be a Luddite. 
I guess that's true. I, I think, I think the, David, because my focus has been, like I said, historical theology, those types of texts, I haven't had to become as proficient in those technological resources that are available to biblical scholars. Maybe one day someone will teach me. Well, you're in a great place to be taught there, right there at Wheaton <laughs> College. You've got a great program yeah. in biblical languages. So as you're, you're trusting these resources, reading these resources, they're bound to use some language like aorist tense or maybe present tense or yeah. those kinds of participle. I mean, they're using grammatical language at times that you right. now have at least an orientation to, to be able to That's say, right. I, I get what they're saying. That's right. And I still have, I mean, I still, maybe this is just because I'm a nerd, but I still have all of my language resources from when I did my undergrad and seminary training so that I can make sure I'm at least fluent enough in the language to, to track what's happening and the theological significance of that sort of uh, technical language. So let's say you're talking to a young woman who wants to be a theologian one day. Um, yeah. how, do you, how do you advise her on um, getting training. She's an undergraduate there at Wheaton College, and you're advising her. What do, you, what do you say to her? She's sitting across from your desk there? Yeah. Well, I mean, she needs to go to a strong graduate studies program, whether, whether the seminary direction, um, which I actually prefer personally, because I feel like you get, you get the training in pastoral matters, pastoral care, mm -hmm. that make for a good you know, professor scholar in higher ed. Um, but you could also go the, the MA route and continue your studies that way and have experience writing a thesis. I think both are helpful. The question is, do you want to go biblical studies or theology? And then I might advise further from there. But I feel like at the level above the BA, a survey of all of your options would be, would be best to get a general view of the lay of the land um, and then see what strikes your interest. Mm -hmm. I think our interest in, you know, there's a passage, I think, in, in Psalms is that, that as we delight in God, God gives us the desires of our heart. Mm -hmm. And there's something about our desires that are, come in tune with, so our interests line up with, in a sense, the will of God for us. Yes. Uh, not to say in every case, but as we are desiring and as we're, we're kind of moving in that direction. So uh, that's great advice, great advice for any undergraduate or maybe even a graduate student, who knows? Yes, yes. Well, and we definitely need more talented, driven folks in higher ed. So let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's make that happen. Dr. Emily McGowan, thanks for being with us today on Exegetically Speaking. Thank you, David. Thanks to Ian Rosine, Rebecca Larson, and Silvio Vasquez, who helped us produce this podcast. Thanks as well to John Lanzma, our Wheaton-based director, who makes this podcast possible. We're grateful to Phil Keggy for our music. If you want to study biblical languages, then you need to consider Wheaton College. Whether you're an undergraduate or a graduate student, we have amazing programs, a first-rate faculty, and some of the best students in the world. So go to the website, www.wheaton.edu, and look for Modern and Classical Languages. Get started today. If you have questions about this or any of our podcasts, we'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions or questions about any passage in the Hebrew Bible or Greek New Testament, send us an email and we'll see if we can get one of our experts to weigh in on that for you. Our email is exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. That's exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. Thanks for listening.